In today's video, I want to share with you the five steps to hit 100k a month faster with your e-commerce brand. I'll show you in order which five pillars of your brand you'd want to focus on and in which order you'd want to focus on these pillars when building up your brand all the way up to the seven figure level. And if you're new to the channel, you're wondering who's this guy? Why should I listen to him? Well, my name is Justin. I'm the founder of paidadvertising.com, an e-commerce growth firm, having worked now with over 70 brands and having profitably generated over $30 million in client revenue over the last three years alone. So with that said, let's get straight into it. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the 3% rule, but if you aren't, it was created by Virgil Abloh, who was the CEO of Off-White. So that rule states the following. The 3% rule is to create something new by only changing a process, a product, a perspective by 3%. So the goal of that rule is to say you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to take an existing process, flat out copy it, but alter it, or at least alter one aspect of it by 3% at most, and you'll still find yourself with an evolution, a better version of the previous thing. The reason I'm starting with this rule is because the first aspect you have to figure out is product market fit. There's a lot of ways to figure this out, but I'm speaking of this because I think a lot of founders, especially in the product based industry like e commerce, right, or retail, are trying to reinvent the wheel. They're trying to find a new invention. And I think that's specifically true for these kind of tech inventions and products, but it's also true for a lot of fashion brands and such that I see that like try and create a whole new look and feel and stuff. It's like, look, you can if that's what you want, but you'll have a much harder time doing that than taking something you like enjoy and it has been proven to work and simply altered by about 3%. As this is more of a theoretical video, I'm staying top level, but by product market fit, I simply mean having a product that people want. You don't really need much more than that to find success. I've seen the worst website with the worst stats, with the worst email, but the product in itself was so attractive. The, the branding around the product, at least, or the messaging around it was quite attractive and people are just naturally wanting to come closer to it. I'm not sure if any of you are fitness fans, but one guy I came across recently, his name is Sam Solik. He's just popped off on YouTube lately. And if you look at it, and the reason why I'm comparing Ecom to a YouTuber is for the following. If you look at Sam Solik's channel, first of all, both his profile pic and his header are like black and white. And it's like, it looks like a, something that was done in 2008 on Microsoft Paint. Like it, it doesn't look good. If you look at his videos, he never put a thumbnail. There's not like actually any thumbnails. If you look at the video titles, it literally, they're not optimized at all. If you look at the video tags, they're not really tagged properly. If you look at the videos, themselves, a lot of them aren't even really being edited. It's just simple cuts. So you look at that, the guy's not following any of the rules that anyone would have set out for YouTube, right? It's like, whoa, the title is not clickbaity. The thumbnail isn't clickbaity. The channel doesn't look professional. There's no like, you know, crazy cuts or motion graphics and such. It's like, no, there's none of that. And he still grew the channel to like 2.7 million subscribers. How did he grew that? With product market fit. He's the product. His personality is the product. His video style is the product. People like the way that he is, the kind of rawness of the video, the fact that they can relate to a guy like this, right? A guy like Sam. And that just goes to show you, the guy has achieved product market fit without achieving any of the rest. Perhaps what if he started doing better thumbnails? What if he had a better branding on a channel? What if he tagged his videos better? What if he had more clickbaity titles? You could argue it in two different ways. One way could say, well, that would change the essence of who Sam is and people wouldn't keep listening to him. On the flip side, you could say, well, that in itself would actually probably propel the channel because if he was able to do it that good with such kind of little professionalism, if you want, according to like the YouTube space as a whole, well, what if he put that effort into it? Perhaps he could blow up even more. And that is the concept of product market fit. It's to say that at the core is your product are people wanting the product that you have without you having to do much. Much. Speak to people around you, speak to friends, family, post in Facebook groups. Are people wanting to buy what you have to sell or not really? And if the answer is not really, then change what you're selling because your product in itself should have people wanting to buy it actively. And now that this is covered, let me now get into the five steps that I believe are what you need to put into motion. Once you've figured out product market fit, get into these five steps in order. One of the most important things that you have to remember in business, it's just not about what you do. It's about the sequence in which you do things. Sequencing is as important, if not more important than the actions you take, because so many people seem to skip ahead and burn cash too quickly, or as they should have taken different steps, such as step number one, being in my opinion, CRO. 
bro. A lot of people usually push that all the way to the end. They're like, figure out ads, figure out email, figure out all these other things. No, I would focus on having a good website from the start, having a high converting website from the start. Now you're going to tell me, Justin, I need traffic. Sure, but spend the money to have a guy make that website for you in a professional manner from the start. Don't skimp on the website. That's like your storefront. I always say that. It's like, it's the essence of your brand. This is the everything of your brand. Everything goes through your website. Whatever you do, organic, email, influencers, ads, wherever people are going to come from, they end up at your website. If you had a physical store, you wouldn't think twice about having good lighting. You wouldn't think twice about having a good location. You wouldn't think twice about having good furniture inside, about making sure your employees look and sound and feel welcoming. You wouldn't think twice about that because you see it tangibly. In e-com, for some reason, people are insulated from that sometimes. They don't see the value in having a professional website. I'd put that at the top of my list if I was building an e-com store is just having a good website. And it doesn't mean spending trillions of dollars on a good website. You can make a good website with just a basic Shopify theme, or you can buy a theme from, you know, these other people like the Beautify is a great team as an example for any Shopify beginners. But just make sure you have a solid website. And step number two, I'd focus on organic because that really is going to reinforce the product market fit. If people want your product organically without you having to pay to have people see you, right? It's just there's this kind of word of mouth. People share your videos. At the end of the day, it means that you have something interesting. Once again, your concept is proven. Prove your concept, enforce and enhance your product market fit through organic. Crack this. Organic is very erratic. It's up and down. But I'm telling you, if you crack this, all that you're able to know that the conclusion you can make if organic works is one of two things. Either you have product market fit or either you're trendy. One of the two. Hopefully your product market fit. How do you know? If you're trendy, it means you'll see a lot of spikes in your views, right? You'll get like 500k views on one video. The next one's going to do 2k, right? If this is how you know you're trendy. If you're trendy, don't think that you've proven product market fit. This is where I've made a video in the last couple of weeks talking about how dangerous it is to blow up organically in the e-commerce space. I've seen that one of our brand actually was acquired by two investors. And then the investors are the ones that came to us to work with the brand, which was in a distressed space spot, but the brand at their highs was making almost half a mil a month, but it was making that amount in like the span of two days because it kept blowing up with like a random TikTok and then would die off completely. And if you look through the TikTok account, they'd had like one or two videos that got like 12 million views, got them like 400k in sales and then died off the next day. And that's like, that's scary because you're trendy for a second. You're relevant for a minute. You make a lot of money. And then as an e-commerce founder, naturally you'll be like, oh, wow, I'll reinvest this. I'll buy more inventory. I'll buy more stock. But then you end up shooting yourself in the foot because that was a short lived moment. So do organic to prove product market fit. So find consistency in your organic content, which is step number two. Step number three is email. Make sure that from this organic traffic, from this goodwill, this good kind of word of mouth you're starting to get here, make sure you have emails right. Now you have a high converting and a good looking website. You have essentially solid organic traffic coming up and it's consistent, right? You can pump in and pull in about 15, 20, 25K a month completely organically. Then you have email set up. So now you know that people aren't really falling through the cracks, right? If they come through your funnel, if they end up taking any action on your website, you know, now this is own traffic, you've earned this attention, essentially, and now you can retarget them with different messaging through email and SMS channels. Once this is done, move into ads. That's what I would say. Look, if you had money from the start, if you come essentially, you tell me, Justin, I have a million dollars to spend right now. Where do I allocate it? I'd still tell you to focus on a strong website and organic from the start. So to invest into that, but I'd probably move ads up the list. But I'm talking here for most bootstrap founders, which is like 80%, I'd say, of the people, again, watching this channel. So going into that, step four is where I'd get into ads. So at this point, you know, you can comfortably get into ads because number one, you know, your website is looking good and it's converting. Number two, you know, you have organic, so you have social proof. So when you're going to run ads from your meta or Instagram account, people are going to see that there's content, that there's followers, that there's interaction, that there's social proof. So they're going to start trusting you a little bit more. And once you start running ads, once again, there's going to have the email. So now that you know that if you bring traffic to the side, but you fall through the cracks, well, email is going to be there to recoup essentially these sales. So you know, your ads are going to be launched efficiently. And finally is where I'd get into influencers, which I think is one of the most important parts that people often on their look is how important important having content creators and faces associated with their brand will be. 
Look, we've all seen these personal brands uh, masked with an e-commerce business like Mr. Beast, right? With Feastables, right? That is like a personal brand. It's selling a physical and digital product, essentially, depending on kind of the events I know that they've done on their side. But the same is true for having at least a handful of core influencers that can back your brand and push you to their audiences. It kind of acts like word of mouth. I saw this video the other day from this guy called Charlie Morgan, which was talking to like online business owners and such, and was talking about the two points you have to look into essentially when wanting to convert somebody to buy from your business is pain and confidence. It really just comes down to these two because then there's other points essentially, which I forgot which one there were. I think there was three other points he was saying, but all of them trickle down from pain and confidence. Pain, you don't create it, you enhance it. It's already there, it already exists. You just make it come to life. What I've talked about about marketing fundamentals in this YouTube channel so far, which they all help enhance the existing pain or desires that are present within an audience. The one point I'm not talking enough, I feel, is confidence, is making sure you enhance this confidence. Confidence is many ways. It's one, it could be through you personally. So if you are like a founder based brand and the founder is the face of the brand to you, you can build that confidence. If you look good on camera, if you look sharp, if you talk good, if you seem confident, people will start trusting you personally. Then there's the offer in itself, which the offer is the easiest way essentially to build confidence. I'm going back again to product market fit and I'll wrap up this video in a minute with essentially how each step influences the next one. But thinking about your offer, your offer brings confidence because if the offer seems good if the product looks great if the quality looks a one the pricing is great and it resonates with the market people will trust that offer in itself so there's you there's the offer and then there's your clients right which is proof social proof which going back it's the followers it's the comments it's the ugc it's the all the reviews that people are going to see on your website this is what people qualify as your clients so there's three pools of confidence that you can essentially feed and continually foster to help your clients make this buying decision so your offer, yourself, as well as your clients. So tap into pain with the marketing fundamentals, tap into confidence with your offer, with yourself, as well as with your clients. So proof, UGC and such. So then going back to the start, you have product market fit in a sense where people around you seem to want that product without you having anything yet. You don't really have a website. You don't really have like a social media pages. It's just, you're talking about the product in itself and the product seems interesting. Great, okay, that's pretty good. Now you are ready to get into these five steps. One, you build yourself a solid website. So now you have a solid storefront you and again confidence right you start looking a little bit more legit you think through your offer at this stage you make sure your website conveys that offer good so now you kind of go into this step two which is your offer again so now you've covered two pools of confidence right there by having a solid website that displays a good offer so second priority is organic right you're building your organic following to make sure that you're enhancing that product market fit and make sure you're building the foundational third pool of confidence which is your clients right making sure you have a client base you have proof you have essentially these UGC that comes organically to you. People are tagging you in their posts. So now essentially already with the first two steps. So with having a solid website and essentially your organic crack, you have built up your three pools of confidence, which is where you're available now to tap into the pain side. Pain side is usually more done through marketing, essentially through either paid or retention channels. So you get into email to secure the groundwork. So to secure the back end, make sure that people don't fall through the cracks. You get into ads. So now you're feeding the pain, you're enhancing and amplifying the pain that these people have, pushing them to your website, pushing them to take action. Once they get to the website, once they get to your social media page, the three confidence pools are already built up. So now they feel even more confident about their buying decisions. Your conversion rate goes up. And now that you have the money and the liquidity, you can go out there and find bigger names and bigger faces to help you enhance even more this confidence pool and keep kind of securing the traffic channels you get to your brand by partnering with influencers. And if you've made it this far, you are an e-commerce brand owner, you want to partner with a paid ads partner on a meta TikTok and or Google, then click the link down below and book on a call to speak with our team today. On that note, I'm gonna wish you an amazing day. Check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.